Hey everybody, Rod Z, I'm back. This is season two, episode two of the Z Files, and we have an incredible show for you today. A lot of you are doing something very special right now. You're enrolling and trying to get into college, and you got some juniors out there that are starting the process. I remember when I was a senior, sometimes it's very hard, or it seems like there's a lot going on, and, and it's a daunting task, but I got a lady that's here to give you the cheat code and help you get started on that that journey to college. Her name is Andriana Brown, and she's got the cheat code. She's been responsible for $1.4 million just for her son alone, and she's on here today. She's going to give you five tips to help you get started on that journey. You're watching the Z Files. Let's get it. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I said before, we have a wonderful guest here, and she's going to talk about college entry. How do you get into college, the paperwork, signing up for scholarships, all the things that probably give some parents a nightmare, and some people it's not that hard. But for those of you who are a little intimidated by this process, I have somebody that's going to give you the cheat code today. She's a graduate of Tuskegee University. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And she's my cousin. I'm proud to introduce Miss Adriana Brown. How you doing, cuz? I am good, cuz. How are you today? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. So today, I didn't really give a lot about the show except I talked about uh, we on this on the Z files. We want to inform, entertain, and educate people, and we want to give people knowledge that they can use to better themselves or help make their life a little bit easier. So today we're talking about college entry. We're talking about getting into school, getting your paperwork done, and um, from knowing you and knowing what you've done not only for uh, your children but so many others, and it's it's grown. I want you to tell the people what it is exactly that you do. Okay, so let me give a little bit background of how it got started okay. really quickly. So I have a son, My I have three boys. My oldest graduated from um, Hillsborough Community College down in Tampa, Florida, debt free. Um, and I have my middle son who is currently at University of South Carolina. He's a second year student with junior classification and he's attending debt free. This is his second year attending debt free. It was with Austin that I went through the college journey with him from start to finish wow. and gained all this valuable knowledge. He graduated high school um, with 36 college um, acceptances and $1.4 million in scholarship offers. So it was from there, $1.4 million wow. in scholarship offers. I wish you were doing my paperwork when I went to school. Listen, I wish I knew all of this stuff when I was going to school. Right, right. So I got people start asking me, what are you doing for Austin? What, where are you finding these scholarships? So I got tired of repeating myself. So I created the Ask Knowledge Facebook. Ask there. Okay. Yep. Ask knowledge. So my motto is if you don't ask, you won't know. So it was from there that I started posting just tips and tricks and just resources. And then I started posting all these scholarships on on this Facebook group and it has started to grow. And um, that's basically what I do. I try to give families and students um, just guidance on where to start because that's the biggest question I get where do I even begin this is so overwhelming so so that's basically before a lot of people so all this started just from you helping your kids get situated and but but what made you what made you say I want to do this again and help somebody else I didn't realize that this was actually going to be my calling this and, is okay. and my friends kept saying, girl, this, this is, this is your passion. This, you have a mm -hmm. passion for this. You talk mm -hmm. about what you're doing. You, we believe in you. We, we're trusting the process of what you're telling us. So I'm like, oh gosh, that's, that's a lot. I mean, is this, this what God wants me to do, you know? 
so that that's how it that's how it started and I just been growing I've been doing workshops I've been doing interviews I have um about five kids that I actually mentor through the process um three of them right now are seniors and uh they've already gotten scholarship offers and accepted to schools and so we're we're moving and shaking over here with as knowledge wow that's that's a beautiful thing seriously because you have some single parents so i'm going to give you a scenario because you have some people that um it's not it's not daunting at all they're used to it but then you have that that single parent or or that that couple that's trying to get their kid into school and this is the first child in their family's history that's ever gone to or applied for college. And here we are with all this paperwork, all these forms, all these deadlines, dates, and um, rules that we have to follow to get in. So how does, how do we start or how would you start somebody off? Can you give us, can you give us, well, well, tell us the process and then we'll backtrack and we'll take your, your top five recommendations. So it depends. Are we talking about a senior year scenario or are we talking prior to senior year? Well, I, let's 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 back up because that's important too. a lot of people wait to the senior year. But uh, I hear that it's, it's better to go ahead and start getting everything together as a junior. So what do you recommend? I recommend starting actually in your sophomore year. You can actually start your freshman year. Wow. You can start your freshman year with just doing the college tours and doing the scholarship research, getting your scholarship list together. You're building that scholarship list. Your sophomore year, you want to, your spring of your sophomore year, you want to go ahead and take the SAT and ACT. One or the other or both. I know a lot of college counselors going to be like, oh, don't listen to her. She don't know what she's talking about. But let me tell you why. Because... When you get to your junior year, you're going to you're going to want to take it. That's what a lot of people are saying. Take it your junior year, spring of your junior year, summer after your junior year. Well, colleges are now accepting students earlier and earlier. When Austin finished junior year, he had all, by middle of June, he had already received two college acceptance letters with scholarship offers. That was prior to even starting his senior year of high school. Okay. So then you, so let's back up where you need to start is the parent and the student at the beginning of each school year, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year, you need to be in that guidance counselor office. Mm. Make sure, okay, is my child on the right track to whether they're going to a four-year institution or a two-year institution, or if they're going in the military or even in the, in the workforce. ASVAB test. Don't forget the ASVAB. ASVAB is important. So you want to make sure that your child is on the right path with all the right courses because these schools are changing up and they're trying to keep all of their kids in state now. So I'm just going to give a quick scenario. Georgia, they changed. And so um, you have to have four science credits. Well, in South Carolina, you only need three to graduate. So well, if you're okay. over here in South Carolina and you're applying for, let's just say, University of Georgia, you don't have all the credits to get into University of Georgia. Wow. that's, so that's You need to make sure, you know, start looking at the different schools at, that you're thinking about attending and start looking at what are the requirements to get in these schools. So one, you're you're going to the college, um, your guidance counselor, meeting with them, making sure you're on the right track. Then start looking into the different schools that you want to attend. See what the qualifications are to get into those schools. Some schools require you to have three foreign language credits. Some require two, some require one. And they want those to be in consecutive years. So two years of French, not one year of French and one year of Spanish. So you have to look at those things as well. So once you get past all of that, you want to start doing your college tours. And that is important. I don't care what anybody tell you. Those college tours are important. And I know funding, people don't have the money to travel to all these schools. 
but now they have the virtual tours. They have YouTube. Go on YouTube. These students are posting real life scenarios on YouTube at these certain colleges. Yep. What is like to move in first day? Um, what it's like to live in certain dorms. You might be interested in a certain dorm, but then you get on YouTube and see what this this student has posted, and you're like, mm, maybe I don't like that so much. Yeah, there are a lot of there are a lot of vlogs out there. These these yes. students vlogs, and they they keeping it real. They're telling their experience based on. I'm not, I know you can't base your um put all your eggs in one basket, mm -hmm. but it's good to hear different um you know opinions. And then these kids, they're there, they're experiencing it. So right, you know, make sure you do your research and check your background and your sources. Now you might have a disgruntled student, but for the most part. Uh, I've watched a couple of them and the students do pretty well with that. And you yes. said something too that, that I want to, I want to ponder on. You said parents, parents, the word parents. Did you hear her? She said parents, make sure that you are participating and you're fully involved. Don't just give the paperwork to your kids and expect them to do it because they're still kids. Even though they may be mature and doing well in school, they're still kids. And you're going to want to make sure you follow up and stay on top of them. So, so what can you tell us uh, about the scholarship portion? How, how early should we be applying for scholarships and what kind of scholarships should we be looking for? So um, we're currently in scholarship season right now. Scholarship season starts in January, but you can apply for scholarships all year long. So, don't just think you can apply just from January to May. There are scholarships available all year long. It's just more open up in January. The type of scholarships that you look for, you need to look for scholarships that are more geared towards your major, um, your ethnicity, um, where you live, um, geared to, towards your high school, um, start local. I tell everybody, start local when you start looking for scholarships. Because I get a lot of those questions. Where do I even begin to look? Start your at your is, your fraternities and sororities. Yes. Fraternity. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there are biker clubs that have scholarships. So I, 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 I your electric I, company, your electric company, the wow. law firms. Y'all here? Law firms are big right now on giving scholarships. The electric companies are big on giving scholarships right now. So definitely look at that. Go to your guidance counselor. They usually have a list of scholarships that are usually geared towards students that attend that particular high school. Go okay. to the colleges that you're interested in. Type in the word scholarship. Every college website has a search bar. Type in scholarship. It's going to take you to their scholarship page. It's going to tell you what scholarships are offered. Some will give um, a link to external scholarships. So there are ways to, to find scholarships all over. Use social media. Kids are big on social media. So you can use Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. They're posting scholarships everywhere. So those are, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to ask you, is it really that hard to find scholarships? Because some people make it seem like it's the toughest thing in the world. But how many scholarships are out there? And what's the, I want to ask you this, what's the easiest scholarship you've ever found? And or what's the craziest scholarship you've ever seen? Like, you like, they have a scholarship for this? Um, let's see. What's the easiest? The easiest. What is we like? This is this was really a piece of cake, and more people should apply for it. Are there scholarships like that out there? Um, yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think those are more of the local ones. Okay. I think doing the sorority and fraternity scholarships are probably the easiest to apply for because those are going to be more local, more geared to your community. And believe it or not, a lot of kids are not going to apply because they don't want to write the essay. So, um, yeah. So the most, so I posted a scholarship. It was called the Sweet Dream Scholarship. I posted this scholarship last year. S-U-I-T-E. This scholarship. Yep. Sweet Dream. So this scholarship is for decorating your dorm room. People don't think about those expenses. 
it costs a lot to decorate and buy things just for this for your child to live in a dorm room okay. you gotta buy bedding towels um refrigerators all of this stuff this scholarship covers all of that down to the refrigerator and i had um one of my students from my Facebook group actually won the scholarship last year. So, I mean, there are weird ones out there. There are book scholarships. I give out a book scholarship. So there are different types of scholarships out there. You don't just have to look for merit-based scholarships. You can look for scholarships just for books. There are scholarships out there for left-handed people. There are scholarships out there for girls that are over 5'10". So there there are scholarships out there for um, kids that have siblings with cancer. There, the military, tap into the military. If you're a, um, a dependent um, of a military veteran, tap into those, those scholarships. There are thousands of dollars out there just waiting for somebody to, to grab it. But it, it gets left on the table every year. Thousands of dollars is left every year because students don't apply. So if I'm a, if I'm a sophomore, can I start applying for these scholarships? If I get it, will they or do I need to wait or or is does it vary from scholarship to scholarship? If it says that you can apply, if it's open to ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders to apply, go ahead and apply. the The organizations will hold that money until you graduate. So okay. you do not have to say, well, I'm just a 10th grader. I'm not going to apply. No, go ahead. They're going to hold that money. Okay. Y'all heard they holding the money for you. You just got to go out there and get it. And that's good information to know. Cause I didn't know that myself. So let me ask you this. Give us your top five tasks for a student that wants to go to college and, and parents that, that want to help their children get into school. Give us some homework. What are the top five? Cause this sounds like a very, broad discussion that we're probably going to have to bring you back to talk about, but it's good. It's good information for the people. So give us your top five for right now, things you think people should be working on. Right now, number one, get an email address. Get a professional email address where it's um, the parent and the child has access to it. So only your scholarship and college information is going to this email. Okay. So that, that'll keep you organized and you can keep up with everything. You don't want stuff getting lost in the spam. Right. Okay. Second, take the SAT, ACT early. I suggest um, at least taking it your sophomore year, um, the spring of your sophomore year. At least get that baseline so you'll know what you have to work on before you take it again your junior year. You want at least two scores before you start applying to colleges because I'm going to just put this in there really quickly because there's early action and early decision. A lot of kids are doing early action now and a lot of colleges are pulling more uh, students acceptances from that pool of applicants. And that pool of applicants are getting more of the merit scholarship money. So keep that in mind when you start looking at scholarships. Early and, uh, scholarships. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's early action and early decision. And you have to be careful when you're applying because if you do early decision, that's a binding contract. That means that's where you're going if they accept you. Okay. Okay. That's important to know. Yes. What's the top, top tip? <laughs> Number three, get organized. Get um, a spreadsheet. That's how I did with my son. I had a spreadsheet for scholarships, a spreadsheet for colleges. And so we just kept a running list and you put all the columns that are important to you in that, in those spreadsheets. That way it keeps you organized. Um, number four, pay attention to deadlines. There are three deadlines you need to pay attention to federal deadlines, state deadlines, and college deadlines. That comes into play when it's the FAFSA and that's a big thing right now, but that's a whole nother session. <laughs> I, that I can talk about the FAFSA. Yeah, I want to bring you back. FAFSA, uh, um, give us the acronym F A F S A. Yes, and okay. it's that's the free application for um federal student aid. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's people when they think FAFSA, they think a Pell Grant. So gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Um. So pay attention to that. 
um, because the Fed, federal has this own deadline. Your state will have this own deadline for grants that your state offers and colleges have their own deadlines. So you want to pay attention to that. And number five, I always say start local with looking for scholarships. Okay. Start local and expand. And even if you think that you might not qualify, still apply because you just never know. They may not get any applicants. Better to try. You have not because you ask not. That's what the, the, the word says. Huh? Yes. I mean, my first scholarship I did last year, I it went out to over th a thousand people. It was posted everywhere. Wow. I only got 12 applications. Not one. I'm from Macon, Georgia. My mom graduated wow. from Northeast High School. I did too. Not one application from Macon, Georgia. Wow. Not one. I got 12 applications. So you, you heard her, y'all. It's out there. The money is out there. The scholarships are out there. The opportunities are out there. If you pay attention to your deadlines, if you make sure you get organized and get a clear email where you won't lose anything in the spam or in the shuffle, then you have a good chance. This woman is talking about over $1 million in scholarship. So if she can do it, then you can do it. So I tell the people how they can get in touch with you and, and how the services, when, you, when you're talking about Ask Knowledge with the workshops and everything, Tell the people how to get in touch with you and the workshops that you put on. Tell us about those. Um, you can reach me um, on my website, asknowledge.net, A-S-K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E.net. Um, there are links to all of my social medias on there. I'm on Facebook, um, Ask Knowledge. That's the easiest way to reach me. Okay. Um, it's through joining my Facebook group and sending me a message there. Um, my email address is askllc.sc at gmail.com, or you can call or text me at 803-474-8707. All right. There's the information, uh, cuz we want to thank you so much for this. And we're probably going to bring you back another time to talk more about FAFSA and, and anything that you discovered uh, that you want us to share, you let me know so I can put it out and let people know. So we want our kids to have an opportunity and fighting chance. And, and one of the ways through education is to get some scholarships because we know yes. college can be quite expensive at times. Yes. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your dedication. We appreciate you and we You're celebrate welcome. you. And that's why I wanted you wanted to have you as a guest on the Z Files. So God bless you. And we're we'll talking. All right. Bye bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, that's Sister Brown. She's got the information. Make sure you get with her. Go on here and, and, and look her information up. Um, make sure you reach out to her and let's get these kids in college. My name is Rod Z. And on behalf of Boss Move Studios here in Orlando and Lighthouse Media and Entertainment, you've been watching The Z Files. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>